This week's video topic was selected by my Patreon supporters in a poll that I ran last week. If you'd like to also be able to vote on what topics I cover, uh, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. $5 supporters also get access to my videos whenever they're ready instead of just on Fridays. And everybody who supports me gets listed in the credits of every video. Just wanted to mention that real quick, okay let's go. Scripts in a game maker project can do lots of wondrous different things. Mostly what they're used for is condensing a chunk of commonly used code down into a single command that you can then write, which saves on time, fingers, and mental energy. Now what a lot of even intermediate developers don't realize is that some of these chunks of code are so common that they're going to occur across many different projects. How many times have you wanted to move a number towards another number without overshooting it? You wanted to raise your speed but have a speed cap and so on. Usually you do this by writing some variation of a max function, a min function, or a clamp function, but you can just use a script that will automatically and consistently handle this same situation every time. Every time you want to make a number approach another number and not have it overshoot. Having a script like this saves you the mental energy of actually having to process which function to use. Should I use min, max, clamp, which, which, which would be best, while leaving your code easier to read and understand at a later date. And it's something you can reuse all the time across lots of different projects because that's a very common problem to want to solve. So I'm just going to go over a handful of scripts that I use across lots of different projects and that you might find as useful as I have. I didn't write any of these scripts myself but uh, you'll find actually a lot of them are used by lots and lots of different developers because they're just that useful. They'll all be linked in the description so you can just copy them straight into your project. Normally I wouldn't recommend copying and pasting code from a tutorial video but in this case that's it's actually kind of the whole point. It's there to save you time and, and brain power. So uh, go for it, go nuts. This is that's what they're there for. Now first up is approach, and here it is. This is basically what I was alluding to earlier when I was talking about taking a value and moving it towards another value. This is literally what this does. Um, now this isn't a really a, a difficult thing to do in code, right? You can just use max or min or clamp. Um, but this saves you having to worry about which one you want to use. It stops those bits of code looking different to one another and makes it very clear and readable um, to yourself when you're looking at your code later exactly what the bit of code does. Um, you give it a value A uh, that you're, you're changing, um, you give it the value that you want to approach B, and then you give it the amount that you want to move towards it by. Or you can even move away from it by using a negative number, or you can make B a negative number to go in the other direction, like approach handles the direction of movement for you, which is what makes it really, really useful. It won't overshoot, so after doing approach and say a step event, you can always use something like if the value equals the value that, you, that you're moving towards, you don't have to check less than or whatever or, or anything like that in case you overshoot because you know you're not going to. Very, very simple. Something you should note, and this applies to kind of all of these scripts, is that yeah, calling a script in this way, probably not the most efficient way, but it kind of it's kind of negligible to a pretty large degree the impact it's going to have calling a script to do sort of simple functions like this versus the gains from having much more readable code and much more easy to understand code when you come back to it and you're trying to understand what on earth you did earlier, right? It can be really, really helpful. If you don't find you need this sort of stuff, then don't use it. But um, from my experience and the experience of a lot of developers, this stuff super super useful and totally worth the very very minor efficiency cost and you can always go back and refactor these things at a later date if you want to. One other thing that's quickly worth going over about these scripts is you'll see this section at the beginning of every one of these scripts this kind of triple triple forward slash uh, green comment with uh, the name of the script and uh, a list of its parameters followed by the at param um, word. You should uh, definitely have this section at the beginning of every script you create yourself um, it's very, very useful. What it does is by having this here, it defines the script to, to GameMaker. So then later when you're coding, if you type the name of that script and you open you open brackets, you'll get the autocomplete for the parameters, for the arguments that you want to give that script. So it'll treat it just like any other function and you'll be able to see and remember exactly what each script requires you to give as arguments. It can be very, very helpful. Now this one's one of my favorites just for how robust and versatile it is and it's called Wave. What Wave does is you give Wave of two values and it will return a value that waves back and forth between those two values over a given time frame. So you sort of set a wavelength, if you will, for how long it takes for one wave to complete. And then it just returns a value that alternates smoothly between those two values. So you can use it to create a floating item or wavy text or really anything in your game that requires a value to just smoothly move 
between two values over time, which is a lot more often than you might think. And again, just doing this by yourself is simple enough if you're very comfortable with sine waves and time and everything like that, but being able to just call the script stops you having to think about it or remember how any of that works. It's a super great, super useful script. I use this quite a lot. Next up is rap. No, not that kind of rap. This kind of rap. That was a really bad joke. I'm very sorry. The way rap works is very similar to clamp in that you give it a maximum and a minimum and it keeps the value between that max and that minimum. But instead of clamping, say you, you put the number 12 in and your max is 10, instead of going back to 10, what it does is it wraps the value around so it comes back from the bottom again or comes back from the top if you went off the bottom. So in the case where if you had a minimum of zero and a maximum of 10 and your value was 12, your end value would be two because you would go off the top and then you would come back with two left over. It can be very useful when working with angles and you don't want things to like go over 360 or stuff like that or any particular value that you want to wrap around in this fashion. Very useful. Next up is jump in direction. I actually did write the script. I wrote it today in about five seconds. Um, I'm surprised I've never used it before. What it basically does is does what you would usually use length dir x and length dir y to do, which is move an instance in a particular direction by a given amount. But instead of having to write two lines uh, to move along the x-axis and the y-axis, you can now just write one line and include the length and direction, and it just makes it easier and cleaner to read and remember how it works and what exactly that code is trying to achieve, which is kind of the point of all of these. Last but not least is chance. What chance does is you give it a number and it returns whether or not that number is greater than a random number between naught and one. What this allows you to do is for example type if chance 0.7 and what you've written there is basically um, an if statement that will return true 70% of the time and will return false 30% of the time. Gives you a really really easy way to create random chance based on a percentage. Now it's such a short line, such a short script that maybe if you remember exactly how this works um, you can just type that each time. You can just type 0.3 greater than random 1 rather than um, calling chance as a script. But because of how scripts work it makes it really readable and really nice to look at and easy to understand when you type something like if chance 0.3. It's, it's really clear what that does. So it's up to you. That's personal preference. I quite like using the script. It just uh, I have enough trouble trying to remember how my code works as is, so every little helper I can get is a great help. I am a huge fan and I guess an advocate of using helper scripts to keep your code as readable and understandable as possible for the longest possible time. It's good to get into the habit of writing your own helper scripts uh, that you can reuse between projects for chunks of code that you just find yourself writing a lot. Um, it can save you a lot of time and you slowly start to build up a tool set of different things that you can use to very quickly solve problems and allows you to get faster and faster and more effective at building games. I also recommend checking out the website gmlscripts.com. There's some useful gems on there as well that you might find useful for your own projects. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you've got any scripts of your own that you think are really useful, chunks of code that you reuse a lot between projects, feel free to share them in the comments below. Developers sharing this stuff with one another over Twitter is more or less how I discovered a lot of these different scripts. I hope you found this one useful, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next Friday with part 4 of the platformer series. Big extra shout outs to my Patreon supporters, without whom this video wouldn't have been made, and without whom this topic wouldn't have been selected, they voted for it, and so it was made. They'll also be voting on the topic of my next non-platformer series video, which will be the Friday after next. Big shout outs in particular to Inner Mule, Giles Montgomery, Dan, Angel Rodriguez, Harold Guidry, Rockzom, Jason McMillan, and Owen Morgan. Thank you very much for your continued support. And thank you, of course, for watching this video. If you want to join my cool kids on Patreon, find the link in the description or probably over to the left about now. Um, just click on my face and it'll, it'll tell you what to do from there. If you can't or you don't want to, whatever, don't worry about it. I can't really make you do anything. Just a voice on the internet. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.